All right, folks, Mr. Marie here for Fix It Friday. Uh, today we're gonna do very simple, basic maintenance vehicle task. We're basically gonna check the fluids of our vehicle. So today we're gonna look at my pickup truck. It's a 2004 Chevy. Uh, just to give you a quick rundown on how to do this. Uh, it's a good habit to always check the fluids, make sure everything's where it needs to be at, and that way your vehicle runs for an extended amount of time, okay? Cars are expensive. They're expensive to take to a repair shop. So normally we can avoid a lot of cost if we do a little bit of basic maintenance and check things over. So let's start. So first thing looking under the hood, there's some leaves and some other garbage laying underneath here. So let's get that stuff out of there. We don't want that building up and accumulating. It can clog up our uh, ventilation system for the vehicle so we want to get that crap out of there pine needles other stuff like that okay get all that crap out of there okay next we'll take a look at the battery so the battery on this vehicle is on the right hand side we want to look at those terminals and make sure they're clean usually after an extended amount of time the terminals start to rust and corrode and get nasty looking if that's the case you can actually take a can of Coca-Cola, dump it on top of there. That'll get rid of the corrosion. Simply rinse with some water afterwards. Next thing we want to check right here is our winter washer fluid. That symbol is usually always the same for washer fluid. That never really changes. So depending on your vehicle, that's what it looks like. Now the light did come on in mine, so I do know that the washer fluid needs added on. We'd simply flip this up, add our washer fluid to here, and move forward. Okay, because it's starting to get cooler out, we probably want to get a de-icer washer fluid. And that way, once the frosts and things like that start to come, um, we are good to go. We don't have to worry about scraping a window. Next thing you'll see here, this thing here is called the serpentine belt. Okay, and this drives all the accessories on the engine. Um, I always just take a quick look at it, make sure it doesn't look like it's cracked or um, any pieces hanging off of it. While we're sitting right here, the next fluid we can check is the power steering fluid. Uh, this is a 5.3 liter V8 uh, Vortec motor. If you look down here, it looks like a small steering wheel. We'll take and wipe the top of that off and we'll check the fluid level. So basically what we'll do here, have yourself a piece of paper towel. I'm gonna take and unscrew this, turn that to the left, pull it out, we'll give it a wipe first. Second thing we'll do, put that back in, loosen it up, and we'll check the fluid level. So right now you can probably see it dripping. Okay, we wanna check and make sure that that is in the cold region on the dipstick. So you can see where the fluid level comes up to here. Up top where my thumbnail is, that would be hot. That's cold, so the vehicle has not ran yet today, so the vehicle is uh, definitely cold. That add mark down here, if we were to add fluid or need to add fluid, okay, it would be in this range at the lower portion of that dipstick. Okay, so we'll place that back in because we don't need to add anything. Make sure that's locked in. If you're going to start the vehicle with that loose, uh, it will spew fluid everywhere. So that's one thing we want to be careful of. Moving right along. This here is called a radiator hose. Okay, that's part of the cooling system in the vehicle. I always take a look at it, make sure it's not cracked or doesn't have any abrasions or anything to it. If it starts to get scuffed up, it could potentially blow off and you would lose the antifreeze in the motor. Okay, speaking of antifreeze, this is our overflow tank. That's where we check our coolant. Now, if you look on the left side, you may not be able to see it. It says right here, full. Okay, below this level here, it'd be a low fluid situation. So we don't have to open up the cap because we can visually see that it is not full, or it is full rather. If the vehicle is hot, do not open up the radiator cap. Okay, this fluid will basically come out of here at a high pressure and scald you. Normally vehicles run around 200 degrees, so don't pull that off while the vehicle is hot. Okay, so this is the passenger side of the motor. 
we're going to check the engine oil next. That is usually indicated by a yellow dip stick. So what that does is there's a piece of material attached to this. It goes down into the oil pan and it measures the level of the oil. So the first thing we're going to do is pull this out and wipe it off with a paper towel or a rag. I like to start clean first. We'll then put that dipstick back in the dipstick tube. We want to get an accurate reading for this, so we just want to make sure it's settled. Okay, we'll now pull that dipstick out. Whoop, just drop the paper towel. And you can see on those lines, so we can focus. Okay, you can just see that hatch mark, and that is where we want to be at. Okay, so we can see we have plenty of oil. If it was ever in a lower uh, position out of this cross hatch section, we'd want to take and add motor oil to it. Okay, where do we put the oil at? Let's get the dipstick back. Usually on this part here of the motor, this is called the valve cover. You'll see a cap like this. It looks like a little oil fill, uh, oil canister with a drip next to it. And normally right here, it tells us the oil type. So this takes five, SAE 5W30. And that's basically the oil that we want to use. Okay. Next, we're going to check the transmission fluid. Now, normally on a transmission fluid, the vehicle has to be hot. So I'd have to take this and drive it. Um, several miles to get this warm probably drive for about 10 minutes and then we would check it so we'll pull it one time so you can see what it looks like these normally have a lock on them we're going to want to lift that up okay pull the dipstick these are usually pretty long we'll give it a wipe and I'm going to show you what this looks like Okay, so it says on our dipstick, there's our crosshatch, that's where we want it to be at. And there, if we read the dipstick, it says check and park, engine idling, so it has to be running, vehicle level, we went on a flat surface, trans, trans hot must be in crosshatch. So we want the transmission warm. Basically, what we need to do is drive this roughly 10 minutes, warm the vehicle up, and we can check this fluid. Okay? Another thing we like to do is go around, and check and make sure the light bulbs are working. So this is our low beam on the outside, usually a daytime running light down below, high beams on the inside. You can see the four-way flashers are working or turn signals. So I like to do a walk around just to make sure everything's good. We'll grab the back also. Always keep the windows and mirrors and things like that clean. You don't want a dirty vehicle. First off, I don't like a dirty vehicle. It just look, doesn't look good. And then... On the other end of things, if we have impairments and we can't see what we're doing, then that could also be problematic. So we'll look at the back of this. Okay, we'll check our lights. Okay, our running lights are working for our marker lights. Four way flasher, turn our signal in the back. Okay, listen for different sounds. If something doesn't sound right while it's running, I'm going to make a notation of that and tell your mechanic about it. Something else to be aware of, make sure your inspection is current. A lot of people let their inspection lapse. These are called inspection stickers. This is for the vehicle inspection. They basically check the vehicle, pull the wheels, check the brakes, make sure there's enough tread on the tires, enough meat on the brake pads, rotors, drums, etc. They check to make sure all the lights work, winter wipers, horn, make sure the vehicle's safe for operation. The other sticker says annual emission. They check to make sure the vehicle is not running improperly, make sure it's not polluting the earth too bad. So they usually plug in a computer on this. It's called an OBD2 connector. They plug it in, read the engine, make sure there's no stickers on or no lights on. Another thing we want to check is our windshield wipers. Just a basic visual inspection. These actually need replaced. They're kind of rough looking. 
I have some new ones in the basement to put on. We just haven't gotten there quite yet. Before I put the new wipers on though, I want to clean this windshield very well. It's kind of dirty. We don't want those filings and things like that coming off the road, road dirt grime. We don't want those to chew up our new windshield wiper blades. So we're gonna clean this windshield well and then we will change those.